Good morning and welcome. This is NTV and we're coming to you live from the Mayor's Gardens here in Movende. What is happening here is that Uganda is going to be declared Ebola free. That is a big announcement. That means Uganda has spent 42 days without registering any new infections. And as we speak right now, we have no patients, we have no follow-ups, we have nothing to do with the infection right now. And that is why the announcement is going to be made here in Movende. Movende is one of the districts where the initial cases were registered of the Ebola infection Thank before you, it spread to another six districts. It took the Ministry of Health and Partners 112 days to finally put this infection to an end. And today is the day the declaration is going to be made by the World Health Organization. So. As you can see in my background, the officials are already here. The Minister of Health is here. All the partners, actually, there have been 56 partners working with the Minister of Health within these 112 days. After the declaration will be made, we were also told that the epidemiology studies and research is going to continue such that the next time we have an outbreak, God knows when, we have some bit of knowledge and maybe some bit of vaccines and some bit of uh, therapeutics or call them treatments to handle the Ebola Sudan virus. We will now switch you back to the official function where the Dr. Richard Kamanda, who is in charge of uh, uh, public health and communication, is making the opening remarks. We will be back with you after and the event the side, has all this closed. Has been by the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, Dr. Diana Kinyo. We have our colleagues from National Repair Hospitals and Regional Repair Hospitals. All key personalities will be introduced in Before we start, hey. Hey. Minister, allow me to the LC1 chair. How are you, sir? And I request all those who are going to be invited to come here and give remarks to use uh, the time provided. Chairperson L. Swan, kindly use two minutes to welcome us to your area. Thank you. Thank you, um, our MC. In particular, I want to thank Doctor for the good prayer you have given us today. Uh, Honorable Minister, our guest of honor, directors, commissioners, and assistant commissioners, our partners, all the RT RDCs around, honorable MPs, district chairpersons who are around, uh, district task force members, senior civil servants, health workers, and survivors of Ebola. Madam Minister, I'm told to talk within one minute or two, but I would like to thank you very much, you in particular, and our president, for making sure that uh, Ugandans survive the outbreaks of all diseases which come around. Uh, next, I would like to thank the World Health Organization. Actually, it has done good for us for the citizens of Mbende, Kassanda, and other neighboring districts, for the good work they put in Mbende. We are really very appreciative for that. And thank you very much. However, because I'm told I will not thank everybody, we, all of us survivors and people of Mbende, Kassanda, and neighboring districts, we have been working together, more, more so, the people of Movende in particular, because Kassanda is a son of Movende. 
Chivoga and Changkwan. So I would like to thank you very much for the tolerance, for the patience that you, you have been incurring around. However, however, Madam Guest of Honor, this one I think it will go to 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 Ara DC because she has been they have been leading the, these teams. They are I hear I just hear even today this morning I was hearing people in Kassan. There are some workers, healthcare workers, have b not been paid. They are demanding, they are demanding what? They are demanding the appointments. I don't know which comes first. You first work, they give you the appointment, or you first make the appointment. So, Madam Aradis, I think you elaborate about that. Uh, lastly, 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 honorable minister, because this is our country, this is Uganda, we are in the same world. Outbreaks will be coming all the time. There are some people who work like barbarians. You find a border border carrying a pregnant woman, moreover on the main. Then an officer, a security personnel, comes and helps that person. We should be, people have died because of not Ebola, because of not COVID, but because of the security people, harassing people. Please, next time when we get such incidences, that person who is being carried by that border border, that particular person at that particular time, that is the ambulance of that person. Please, next time when we get such, such problem, save us, save life, save Uganda. Thank you very much. Person Ellis, want to thank you for the remarks. I, I think your Secretary for Health didn't give you updates as, as if I, some of the asks you have made, but I think um, you will be able to get more information before we leave this function. Honorable Minister, we are in the municipality. We have come here to officially receive the good news. My assumption is that there is no lamentation. We know all of the key challenges and the successes we have achieved during this time. Let me use this opportunity to briefly ask the mayor to come and use two minutes to welcome us to Mubende Municipality. And the mayor is going to use that time on behalf of the entire district leadership to welcome us in the district and officially welcome the minister and her visitors in the district. Thank you very much. The Minister of Health and your team, allow me to say all protocol respected. On behalf of Mbende District and Mbende Municipality, we welcome you with your team to this historical function where we are celebrating victory over this epidemic which had attacked us and Mbende was an epicenter. We thank you, we thank the government of Uganda and thank all the partners who participated in the struggle to make sure that we defeat this disease, Ebola. We are very happy with the coordination and advices which have been given from time to time, more so to our other DCs in Movende Aradisi Movende, the way she coordinated the task was so marvelous. We are very grateful. We thank the councillors, we thank the leaders, we thank the VHTs who really did a commendable job. At times they could go through a lot of difficulties, but they remained focused on fighting this Ebola epidemic. One time I had that Uganda is good at handling such 
emergencies, but I came to prove that, Mama Minister, you have made a beautiful foundation for such attacks whenever they will be arising, you have the capacity to deal with them. We promise that much as you are declaring today that Ebola is gone, but we are going to remain on lookout to make sure that we don't go back where we have come from. Wish you nice stay in the Mbende district and Mbende municipality. Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, after we have been welcomed in the district and in the municipality, I would like to take this opportunity to invite the Director General to come and introduce to you the different dignitaries that we have. There is quite a number of key leaders that we have from government from UN institutions, from USID, and the number of ambassadors here, and the number of visitors from other districts. Dr. Charles Olalo, kindly come and recognize the key delegates that are here. Honorable Minister of Health, who is the guest of honor, the Honorable Minister of State, in charge of general duties, Honorable Hanifa Kawaya, Your Excellencies, the Ambassadors, all of implementing partners, district leaders, all our workers, the media, all of protocol, respected ladies and gentlemen. My duty this morning is to introduce the members who accompany the Honorable Minister, the delegates of His Excellencies, the Ambassadors, and High Commissioners. And after that, I will request the person who is co aims Master of Ceremonies with the in charge of health education in Mubende to introduce the district leaders. The Honorable Minister is accompanied by ambassadors from the U.S. Ambassador, Her Excellency Natalia Brown, the Embassy of Ireland, represented by His High Excellency, His Excellency the Kevin Colgan, Royal Embassy of no Norway, Embassy Ellen Otsbo Johnson represented. The British High Commissioner, High Excellence Kate, is represented. The United US USA Director, Mr. Richard Nelson, the Mission Director. The USCDC Director, Dr. Lisa Nelson. The delegation of the European Union, represented by Jan Sadek, Ambassador. The UN agencies, I will go to Ms. Susan Ngogi Namondo, is the UN resident coordinator. Mr. Sanis Savage, representing, I mean, the IMO, IOM chief of mission. Ms. Els at a few, the UNDP representative, Mary Achieno, I don't know if she's around, Matthew Crystal, UNSCR, UNICEF, Mr. Munir Salfin is represented, the UN Women, the World Food Program. Quickly allow me to 
go through the implementing partners, the chief of party of FH, FHI 360 degrees, Dr. Nasa and the African CDC, the acting director is with us, Mr. Hamad Ogwell, Ouma, Uganda Refugee NGO Forum, Mr. Nick Bows, Moses Isova, also from the Refugee NGO. From Afinet, we have represented from Afinet, from Jemedic, from the East African community, Dr. Eric Jesmana, you see around? Yes, she's represented. We have Miss Rebecca from USAID and then many others. On the side of the Minister of Health, allow me to introduce the Permanent Secretary, Minister of Health, Honorable Diana Atwine. My colleagues, the directors, Director of Governance and, and Regulation, Dr. Joseph Okware, Dr. Daniel Chavaizi, the Director of Public Health, all commissioners, Commissioner of Health Promotion, Dr. Kabanda, who is the MC, Dr. J.B. Wanyai, who is the Commissioner of Ambulances, let them be upstanding, people need to see them. Dr. Openso, who is the Director of Community Health, is already actually in the community. <laughs> Dr. Jessica Insungwa, the Commissioner in Charge of Reproductive Health. I think those are the ones I have seen. The Under Secretary, ladies and gentlemen, I was making a mistake, because definitely very important. Under Secretary, Minister of Health. So I think I will stop here. Other delegates will be recognized. So let me ask Dr. Representative from the district to come and introduce the members of the different districts and the members who are, who are here. Honorable Minister, there are heads of departments here that uh, the DG has forgotten, and one of them is the one in charge of planning and financing, Dr. Salaviachka. There is also Dr. Alan Muruta in charge of public health emergencies, surveillance. There is um, Sister Chandia Baku, the Commissioner in Charge of Nursing. There is Dr. Herbert Navasa, the Commissioner in Charge of Environmental Health. I have also seen Engineer Jojo Tim, the Commissioner in Charge of Health Infrastructure. Others that uh, I have not seen, there is also Commissioner in Charge of Human Resource Management. Mrs. Anet Musinguzi. There is also a commission in charge of non-communicable diseases, Dr. Aweyo. We also have a number of assistant commissioners and other senior officials from the ministry. We welcome them, and literally many of them actually head the different pillars, which I think uh, that it is one of the areas that we speak about. Mungere njia ulutu ina ba kulembezo kuva mu district yeno ili mubende ngamovano muri mu RDC. Honorable Minister, the RDC who has been the chair of the task force in the mubende district is here with us. She has come with the deputy RDC. We do have the mayor of mubende municipality who has given remarks on behalf of the district. We do have the DPC. 
We also have the DISO. We have the Chief Administrative Officer. We have our colleagues from the Regional Fire Hospital, headed by the Director of the Regional Fire Hospital, Dr. Batiwe and the, the entire team. We have a number of chairpersons from, from different sub-counties that make Mwende district and other colleagues from the divisions that make Mwende municipality. We also have different sub-county chiefs, a number of religious leaders and cultural leaders. In a special way, we also have a number of district councillors here present. I know the other DC will make some remarks and should be able to uh, give a brief on the number of key personalities. In a special way, Honorable Minister, we have a team of survivors. There are, are many, they are here, and they will, they will be introduced uh, later at an appropriate time. Honorable Minister, let me take this opportunity to invite you to come and make the end of a border brief response report and end of outbreak declaration statement on behalf of the government of Uganda. Thank you very much, MC. My sister, the Honorable Minister of State for General Duties, Honorable Anifa Kawoya, Excellencies, Heads of Institutions, Development and Implementing Partners in your various capacities, the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Ministry of Health officials, the RDC of Muvende and Kasanda, LC5 chairpersons, His Worship the Mayor, political leaders of Muvende and Kasanda, technical officers, health workers, the people of Muvende and Kasanda, and the media. Good afternoon to you all. It is still morning. Good morning to you all. Allow me first of all to recognize a few people who were not introduced. I will start with the Minister of State for Health General Duties. Just stand up for recognition. I bring apologies from the Minister of Kampala, Honorable Minsa Kabanda. Allow me to recognize Dr. Jonas Tegen, the WHO country representative. <laughs> Allow me to recognize my brother all the way from Ethiopia, Dr. Uma, the African CDC director. <laughs> I trust all the others we are recognized. Good. So I will now go straight to my statement. Today, 11th January 2023, marks 113 days since the start of the Ebola outbreak in Uganda, which was declared on the morning of the 20th September 20. 22. The outbreak started in Madudu, sub-county, Muvende district, and at the time of confirmation, several people had been infected and others with symptoms consistent with Ebola had died. 
The outbreak was identified after an adult male who later died was managed at Muvende Regional Referral Hospital and confirmed to have been infected with Sudan Ebola virus disease. Prior to this outbreak, Uganda had registered seven previous outbreaks, as outlined below. In 2018, Ebola Zaire cases were imported from the DRC into Kasese district, with four cases and four deaths registered. Case fertility, 100%. In 2012, two Sudan Ebola outbreaks occurred. In Chivale district, the outbreak happened in July with 11 cases and four deaths. Case fertility rate, 36% while the Luero district outbreak happened in November with six cases and three deaths, case fertility rate 50%. In 2011, Sudan Ebola outbreak occurred in Luero district. This was a one case and one death outbreak with no secondary transmission. Case fertility rate 100%. In 2007, an outbreak occurred in Bundibujo district, and that was named Bundibujo Ebola outbreak, where 131 cases and 42 deaths occurred. Case fertility rate, 32%. In the year 2000, Uganda's first Ebola outbreak Sudan Ebola outbreak occurred in Gulu district, where 425 cases and 224 deaths were recorded. Case fertility rate, 53%. The Gulu outbreak was and remains the largest outbreak ever registered in Uganda, which lasted for close to six months. This outbreak marks the seventh Ebola outbreak in the country and the fifth attributed to Sudan Ebola virus, which was last reported in 2012, more than a decade ago in the then Chivale district, but present day Kakumiro district. I'll give a brief outbreak description. In this outbreak, a total of 143 confirmed cases of Ebola with 22 probable cases and 55 deaths have been reported with a case fertility rate of 39%. 87 recoveries have been registered in this outbreak. Of the 143 confirmed cases, 85, that is 59%, were males, while 58, which is 41%, were females. By age, 26, which is 18%, were children, while 117, which is 82%, were adults. The outbreak started in Muvende district and was confirmed on the 19th of September, 2022. It then spread to Kasanda, Chegegwa, Kagadi, Bunyangabo, Wakiso, Jinja, Masaka, and Kampala City. Outside the epicenter district, which is Mubende, secondary transmission took place in Kasanda, Wakiso, Kampala, Chegegwa, and Jinja. Despite imported cases in Masaka, Vinyangabo, and Kagadi, 
there were no secondary transmission. There was sustained transmission in both Katsanda and Muvende districts, making the two epicenter districts. The most affected district was Muvende, which is also the initial epicenter district of this outbreak, with 64 confirmed cases and 29 deaths, followed by Katsanda district, with 49 confirmed cases and 21 deaths. The records in the other districts are as follows. Kampala City registered 18 cases and two deaths. Chegegwa District registered four cases and one death. Wakiso District registered three cases and zero deaths. Jinja District registered two cases and one death. Kagadi District registered one case and one death. Masaka District registered one case and one death. Bunyangabo District registered one case and no death. The major drivers of transmission were household infection and amplification in some private health facilities, except for one super spreader event in Katsanda district, which was post burial. Burials or burial practices were not a major driver of the transmission. Three portals of transmission were observed in this outbreak that include contact transmission, sexual, and transplacental transmission. Source of the virus. The source of this outbreak, like many others, is still not known. My ministry working with local and international partners, continue to look for the most possible and proximal source of the current outbreak. And the reasons for the occurrence of Ebola outbreaks around the months of July to October. When this research is concluded, we shall inform you accordingly. Interventions that were implemented to contain the outbreak. The government of Uganda, through the Ministry of Health and Partners, implemented several interventions which led to controlling the Ebola outbreak, a success we are celebrating today. These interventions include the following. One, setting up an on-site Ebola testing mobile laboratory in Movende district, where samples were picked, tested, and results released within six hours. Two, we constructed 353 bed capacity treatment units in Movende at Madudu, Subcounty, Kasanda District, Mulago Hospital, and at Entebbe, and equipped them with medical supplies and drugs. Number three, we trained over 2,339 health workers of different categories from both public and private facilities. The healthcare workers were particularly trained in infection prevention and control against the deadly Ebola Sudan virus infection, psychosocial support, and care for both patients and affected families, and enhanced clinical care for the Ebola positive patients. Number four, 
we enhanced the surveillance system in all affected districts, listing and contact tracing for 21 days, daily follow-up of all contacts, and active case search in the affected districts. Number five, we carried out Ebola virus disease mortality surveillance, testing of all dead bodies for Ebola in Kassanda, Muvende, Masaka, Jinja, and Kampala City. This was aimed at ensuring no unknown transmission chains were missed. Number six, we intensified awareness about Ebola virus disease through public addresses by His Excellency the President, the ministers, together with members of the Strategic and Scientific Committee. Daily talk shows and messages were run by local radio stations. We had social media messages door-to-door -door sensitization of the communities and sensitization of small community gatherings by the district and community task forces. Number seven, restriction of movements in and out of the two districts of Muvende and Kassanda and an all-night curfew to control the spread of the virus to other districts. Number eight, quarantine of contacts for 21 days to avoid spread to other districts and to others. This was especially useful in the urban areas of Kampala metropolitan area and for resistant communities in Muvende district. I am glad to note that these measures have worked and we have successfully controlled the Ebola outbreak in Uganda. Moving forward, the Ministry of Health will continue to monitor the Ebola survivors and support them to reintegrate within their communities. I urge the population to remain vigilant and implement the standard operating procedures and report any person in the community that presents with Ebola-like symptoms. And these include sudden onset of fever, headache, weakness, joint pains, vomiting, bloody diarrhea or urine, bleeding from the body openings to the nearest health facility or call the Ministry of Health toll-free numbers. Acknowledgements. I want to thank His Excellency the President of Uganda for his personal dedication and commitment to control efforts and the timely interventions at all levels of the response. The Right Honorable Prime Minister and members of Cabinet for all the support provided in responding to the Ebola outbreak. I also want to thank the members of Parliament who were present with us in this race, especially the woman MP of Muvende, Honorable Nakazibwe Hope Grania, who is also here in person. Honorable, st kindly stand up. I thank the local leadership in all the nine districts, including the area MPs, RDCs, LC5, council executives, and the other lower level councils. I request that you stand up and we appreciate you. Thank you. 
My sincere gratitude to all the healthcare workers for their selfless and tireless efforts, dedication, and commitment to save lives and end the Ebola outbreak. If there are any health workers here, please kindly stand up for appreciation. A special and very warm appreciation to all our development partners, both local and international, who have played a pivotal role, both technically and financially, in this fight to control Ebola, among other epidemics, and ensure the safety of Ugandans. Our development partners, and implementing partners and all the ambassadors, please kindly stand up and we appreciate you. And thank you for coming in person. If I wasn't here, I would have done the Ula lesson for you. Even then, I'll do it after when I leave this place. Last, but not least, I want to thank my Ministry of Health teams, led by the Permanent Secretary, and I request all of you to stand up for recognition. I said last but not least, but allow me to take this opportunity to introduce the incident commander of the response. Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Chobe, please step forward. That gentleman, I said step forward. That gentleman took us through the COVID-19 response, monkeypox, Ebola, and is still running strong. Thank you very much, Incident Commander. <laughs> May I request the pillar heads to join you there? The pillar heads, pillar heads, can you please join your commander? May I request the incident commanders of Kasanda and Mubende to step ahead so I can start with them. Mr. Tech Kajirita, incident commander Mubende. He also doubles as the deputy incident commander nationally. Kajirita, I know you are the most happy person today. Well done. <laughs> Next to him is the incident commander of Kasanda, a very difficult place, Dr. Vuide. Well done, Dr. Vuide. You can now resume your position as I introduce the pillar heads. I will start with the pillar head of case management. We commonly call him Dr. Moha, Muhammad. He stepped forward. That man was responsible for ensuring that everybody who went into the Ebola treatment unit came out well. <laughs> Next, we have risk communication risk communication, 
Dr. Kabanda, Richard, the one who was responsible for ensuring that we penetrated all the villages and spread information to the population. <laughs> Next to Richard is one of my favorite sons, the one who was responsible for ensuring that we carried out quarantine in the right way. I'm sure people know him very well. He's another Richard, but he's Mugahi. Then we have community engagement. Dr. Dugum Upenso. That one lives among the community members. We have Dr. Hapsa Lukwata, psychosocial counseling. Oh, next to the IC is the incident, I mean is the, the pillar head for schools. Uh, pillar head for schools, now I'm a bit, little bit forgetting your name. Dr. Patrick Ajuna, the one who ensured that children went home, they were well looked after, those who are outside came back in. Then we have... Uh, Habat, Habat responsible for wash, wash in the communities and also in the facilities. We have Anet, human resources. Thank you for ensuring that you have a good inventory. Isaac, laboratory, all the tests. Another of my sons, uh, Ronnie, who had two roles, supporting case management and IPC, but also human resources. Another of my favorite brothers, Alan Muruta, epidemiology. He ensured we had all the over 200 epidemiologists. Your name has escaped me. Oh, 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 Dr. Kabuero. Dr. Kabuero, I, I didn't expect you here, but I'm excited to see you. <laughs> Dr. Kavueru, responsible for treatment, clinical sub-pillar. The woman who guided us on money, I should call her a lady, who worked very closely with the permanent secretary to guide us, Dr. Sarah Chika. Thank you very much. Another lady who loves children and women, and worked very closely with schools and case management, Dr. Jessica Nsungwa. Have I missed anyone? The ones I have missed here, please help me. Oh, District Pillar Leads, give me your names. Mr. Chimera, Lab Pillar Head Mubende. And? Kasumba Surveillance Pillar Head Mubende. Thank you very much. I will now request you to take your seats, but you can walk with a swagger. <laughs> Before I come to the most important people, uh, Allow me again to introduce, you know them of course, the permanent secretary and thank her for timely release of funds to the district. P.S. stand up once again. 
Thank you very much for ensuring that we had resources at every point where we had interventions and the Director General in absentia. Now I want to introduce the most important people, the most important people, the ones who ended the epidemic. We call them our most important stakeholders in this response. And before I request you to stand up, I want to thank you for your sacrifice, your patience, and your commitment to end the outbreak. Money alone cannot end it. Health workers cannot end it. The structures we have in place cannot end it. So the most important people in this response are the communities, the population of Muvende and Kasanda. Stand up and we appreciate you. Please stand up and we appreciate you. Y you are fearing appreciation or you are overwhelmed. Thank you very much. Indeed, you ought to know that if it wasn't for you, this outbreak would not have come to an end. You did a good job moving door to door. And in that regard, allow me to appreciate the backbone of the communities, the village health teams. Are they here, village health teams? Thank you very much. You are part of the communities. I will now move to the declaration. Having spent two incubation cycles of 21 days each, making a total of 42 days, yesterday, the 10th of January 2023, since the discharge of the last confirmed case on the 30th November 2022. Having registered no new Ebola case, despite sustained intense surveillance, both at the epicenter districts and nationally. I now confirm that all transmission chains have been fully interrupted and take this opportunity to declare that the outbreak is over and Uganda is now free of active Ebola transmission for God and my country. God is good. And all the time, and we give him the glory. Thank you. Thank you and thank you. God bless you all. I was wondering, some of us who are not your sons and your brothers, where do we fall? <laughs> it seems uh, Alan Muluta is the only sweet brother. We fall under other categories. <laughs> Thank you, Royal Minister, for, for, for the good news. I think um, we need to have some time off to dance off the stress since 2020 and the hard work as we prepare for next week to start on the fight for malaria. Next on the agenda, we are going to receive end of a border to break declarations by the international community. And I would like to 
invite. But before you invite, Honorable Minister, we have the Director for Public Health and Environment from KCCA, Dr. Daniel Okello. I had planned initially to introduce Dr. Henry Chove before the, before the minister did in a special way. But since he came dressed in a uniform, I thought uh, that introduction had been promoted to the minister. We also have Dr. Issa Makumbi from EOC. Usually most of the alerts go through EOC before the technical teams. Uh, get on the operational issues. In a special way, Honorable Minister, allow me to introduce Aineviona Emmanuel. I know he's very known to the media people, but without him, there is no way how we, we can work so closely with the media. And the media has done really a very good job. Honorable Minister, allow me to invite the country representative for WHO, Dr. Jonas has been a lucky WR because you got, ever since he came, we have been through epidemics, from one epidemic to another. The, the experience you have gained from Uganda, Dr. Jonas, there's no NAWR who has gained it. In a single country, you must be a special, a special person. WR, allow me to invite you, come and take us through the next session of that declaration from the international community. Honorable Minister uh, of Health, Honorable uh, Minister of State, General Duties, Ministry of Health, Permanent Secretary, Director General, in your absence and in your representation, Your Excellency Ambassadors, the UN Resident Coordinator, and other head of agencies, the Africa CDC Acting Director, Dr. My real brother, Dr. Ahmed Oguel Oma, Ministry of Health officials, other ministries, department and authority officials, honorable members of parliament, district officials, RDCs, the Lord Mayor, religious leaders, political leaders, the people of Mubende and Kasanda, survivors, and colleagues on the ground who made this possible. This is a special day. And thank you, media colleagues, for being here to cover it. Allow me, Honorable Minister, to take this duty of confirming that the Ebola outbreak is over in Uganda. As a global health organization, both our Director General, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, and our Regional Director, Dr. Michi Dr. Chidi Moete, have sent a message because they were not able to, pre to be present with you, but they have recorded messages which with your permission, I will ask the media, the, the people to transmit on the screens. Colleagues, please. The your Director General. The Honorable Minister of Health of Uganda, Dr. Jay Nache Mochero. Excellency, your Excellency, the Honorable Minister of Health of Uganda, Dr. Jay Nache Mochero. Excellencies, ambassadors, representatives of partner and community organizations, donor agencies, colleagues from WHO, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a very happy new year to you all. It gives me great pleasure 
to join you today on this landmark event for people's health. Though regrettably I couldn't be in Mubenda district physically, rest assured of my full support. Today, we join the government of Uganda to declare the end of the Sudan Ebola virus outbreak in the country less than four months after the first case was confirmed in the central district of Mubende on the 20th of September, 2022. In line with WHO recommendations, the country is having passed 42 days since the last case paves the way for the declaration of the outbreak's end. After the announcement of the Ebola outbreak on 20 September 2022, the Ministry of Health, with support from WHO and partners, initiated a fully-fledged response plan to contain the disease rapidly. Your Excellency, I wish to commend the role of the President, His Excellency General Yoweri Museveni. His efforts highlighted the critical importance of high-level political engagement in epidemic and emergency preparedness and response. I equally thank you and your team and other sectors of government for your remarkable leadership and action in responding to a complex outbreak. With no vaccines and therapeutics, this was a challenging Ebola outbreak in the current context, but Uganda stayed on course and continuously fine-tuned its response. As the world's leading public health agency, and working across the country, regional and global levels, we provided technical and operational support. We deployed the tools needed for a successful response. With the help of donors, we devoted a total of $6.5 million from the WHO Contingency Fund for Emergencies for the Response in Uganda, and another $3 million to support readiness in the six neighboring countries. We worked closely with the Africa CDC and ministries of health in the highest at risk neighboring countries to establish a regional Ebola task force that coordinated readiness efforts and facilitated information sharing across the countries. Soon after Uganda declared the Sudan Ebola virus outbreak, we worked with vaccine developers, donors, and the Ugandan health authorities to identify candidate therapeutics and vaccines for inclusion in trials. Three candidate vaccines were identified, and the first doses arrived in the country on the 8th of December 2022, constituting an historic milestone in the global capacity to respond to outbreaks and prevent them from becoming pandemics. Our team helped design the trial protocols and trained 200 members of locally led research teams on conducting the trial according to strict international standards. My sincere appreciation goes to the health staff who saved the lives of 87 survivors by offering supportive care. I express my sincere condolences to the families who lost loved ones to this outbreak and the seven health workers who died in the line of duty. As the outbreak officially ends today, it's essential that we review the response and lessons we learned for future outbreaks. The key role that communities play was amply demonstrated in this response and its initial challenges. We also saw the need to engage the entire health system, including the private sector. We're working with the Ministry of Health to plan an after-action review in this regard. One of the key features of this response was a collaboration with various institutions and mobilizing capacities across the board. Over the next six months, we'll be harnessing these lessons to inform our focus on health promotion, and disease prevention. Close follow-up of survivors to ensure they are well integrated back into society will remain a priority. Honorable Minister, partners and colleagues, congratulations once again on this great achievement. Thank you. Your Excellency, Excellency, Minister Jane Acheng, my sister, Excellencies, dear colleagues and friends, New Year's greetings and best wish from all of us at WHO. I congratulate the government, health workers and the people of Uganda for your leadership and dedication which have enabled this Ebola outbreak to be contained in less than 
four months. I commend the government of Uganda for declaring the outbreak immediately after it was confirmed and notifying WHO as required under the international health regulations. We thank donors and partners for swiftly mobilizing resources and vaccine developers for making candidate vaccines available in record time. Even in the absence of approved vaccines or therapeutics for the species of Ebola, Uganda was able to use proven public health tools to contain the outbreak. Congratulations. I salute the dedicated health workers, partners, and communities who work day and night to save lives. This outbreak has finished, but WHO's commitment to Uganda has not. We remain committed to strengthening Uganda's health system as part of its journey towards universal health coverage and a healthier, safer, fairer future for all the people of Uganda. I thank you. Honorable, Man Honorable Minister and distinguished guests, you might be surprised why the world was concerned when we hear Ebola. We have the memories of West Africa and DRC where people died in thousands, where economies were devastated. That's why we thought we should give it the highest priority to address Ebola in Uganda. And to our surprise, to our gratification, Uganda has proved it again. Even the most dangerous virus can be contained because, because of the dedicated health workers, the, communi the committed community, a transparent leadership which was able to support this response. The global community is learning a lot from this success. This success is not only of Uganda. It's a global success, and the global health community will learn and follow Uganda so that Ebola is not as scary, Ebola is not as devastating as we used to know it. I congratulate you all here for this great day. And Honorable Minister, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jonas. I thought, uh, Dr. Jonas, that uh, you're calling over the day up to your neighbor. It is still within that. And since the minister and uh, Dr. Jonas, no one used this umbrella, I think I should go with it. You can. Nobody should use this umbrella. Yes, except you. Dr. Kavanda, you, you, you challenged me again, and thank you. Uh, I mean, my apologies for misunderstanding your instruction and guidance. It gives me a great pleasure to introduce my dear brother, Dr. Ahmed Omar, who is the acting director of Africa CDC. As you know, Africa CDC is one of the great innovations where Africa is taking in ensuring that we are self-sufficient, that we ensure we take care of our health, led by people who understand our priority, our concern, and our strength 
to ensure that we also build a sustainable system so that we do not always rely, as we have seen in the time of COVID, on others. Dr. Ahmed, you have a great task to build that responsibility. And it is my honor to ask you, on behalf of Africa CDC, to also join in declaring this outbreak is over. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, my brother Jonas. Allow me to stand on the protocol that has already been established. And as I do that, Honorable Minister, I would like to say in Swahili, Pongezi and Pole. Pongezi is a Swahili word for uh, congratulations because it is a huge achievement to be able to bring Ebola under control in under 70 days. We are counting over 100, but the 100 includes the countdown. If you look at when the first case was diagnosed to when the last case was documented, it is about 69 days. So Pongezi, Honorable Minister, to you and your team. And I add Pole, Pole being feeling sorry. I feel sorry for you because you have raised the bar so high. It means that the next time anything is happening in Uganda and Africa, we'll be expecting similar results under 70 days control and uh, just over 100 days to declare any outbreak to be over. It's a big achievement, and we need to be proud of this. <laughs> Let me also commend the ownership with which the government and the people of Uganda have taken this outbreak response in the last 113 days. It is the example that we on the continent of Africa need to follow when we are faced with similar challenges particularly health outbreaks. Indeed, it is the example that we, um, as Africa CDC, are going to be using as we support other African countries in preparing and responding to various health emergencies and outbreaks here on the continent. Let me thank the teams that have been working in the background the Africa CDC team who have been here with the government from the beginning, our partners including WHO who have also been here from the very beginning, every other individual and organization that have contributed uh, to this excellent response and outcome, I acknowledge and I thank you and in a very special way, I would like to thank our health workers. Just as we wake up every day and go to our workplaces to face our duties. They go to the workplaces to face many different conditions, including Ebola. And they never stay away, even at the height of the outbreak. So for the health workers, a very special thank you. And to those who lost their lives in the process of conducting their duties, our prayers are with them and their families. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there are some innovations that we need to carry along out of the experience, not just of this particular Ebola uh, outbreak, but also COVID and other outbreaks that we see on the continent and beyond. One such innovation was an urgent regional approach working with WHO and hosted by the government of Uganda. Honorable Minister, thank you very much. We brought together ministers of health from the continent here to Uganda to discuss how we can be able to have a regional approach to responding to this particular Ebola outbreak. A task force was formed um, to address Ebola control on the continent, and that task force continues with its work even beyond 
the declaration today because we need that experience in other outbreaks, we need that experience in other aspects of our work, not just as Africa CDC, but as a continent. Beyond that emergency ministerial meeting, we have also been impressed by the difficult decisions that the government of Uganda has taken and the minister has uh, shared some of those, including selective lockdowns, quarantine, um, and um, other public uh, measures that have contributed to the rapid control of this particular outbreak. A very big um, thank you to all the village health teams, and we appreciate the sacrifice that they make at the community level, and we commit that we shall continue to use this important innovation in bringing good information to the communities um, so that we can be able to engage directly with those who are going to help with bringing the um, outbreak under control. The fact of the matter is, outbreaks begin and end at the community level. When communities are well informed, outbreaks are rapidly controlled. When communities are not well informed, then we have challenges of long and drawn out outbreaks. So a very big congratulations to all the communities where this outbreak started and ended in a rapid way. The lessons that we have learned, Honorable Minister, during this particular outbreak, indeed the lessons that we've learned during other outbreaks on the continent, give us the confidence that Africa is able to do what is required on its own, even though we welcome partners to support the work that we do. And what has happened here in Uganda, Honorable Minister, we salute the openness and the transparency with which this outbreak has been guided. We salute the openness and transparency with which information has been provided. And we salute the openness and transparency with which your government has engaged with partners who are willing to help in controlling uh, this outbreak. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Disease outbreaks and threats cause a lot of social and economic stresses. We have seen it during COVID. We have seen it during this particular Ebola outbreak. These consequences go beyond our own border as Uganda into the region, indeed globally. These effects are possible to control early if we work together with purpose and under the guidance of uh, the government's one uh, plan. So I urge, I urge our partners, I urge all those friends of Africa that let's always work under one plan that is guided by the government so that the results are possible to achieve quickly as we have seen uh, here. Honorable Ministers, we also take a note of the priority areas that you and your government have enumerated yesterday and partially today uh, that will require support going forward. As Africa CDC and the Africa Union, we commit to continue to support your efforts in ensuring that no other outbreak comes in the way that this one did. Indeed, we are committed to support your government in ensuring that any time an outbreak comes, it is controlled in the shortest time possible. We are particularly pleased that the role of community health workers has not only been amplified, but has confirmed the key part that they play in bringing under control an outbreak of this nature. And we therefore are looking forward to working with the government of Uganda, particularly the Ministry of Health, to continue to support community health work and um, community uh, engagement and uh, communication. It is our belief that when we look at the experiences um, we have achieved, uh, the, the results we have achieved during this particular uh, outbreak, 
it is our belief that if we strengthen our institutions at country level, if we ensure that our workers, particularly the health workers, are well capacitated and provided with the right tools, if we afford ourselves the opportunity to manufacture our own health products, if we generate the right partnerships, then we can not only be able to do what has happened this time, we can be able to do more. And this is the embodiment of Africa's new public health order, where we are convinced that the continent can be able to take its priorities in its own hands and guide response to any uh, health outbreak and disease uh, threat. Finally, let me remind ourselves that when, in the African saying, that when we come together in the village square, it is not because we cannot be able to see the moon from our homes, and it is not because we cannot be able to have a meal in our homes. Coming together is good for the community. And the way that we have come together to respond to this particular Ebola virus outbreak is the way that we need to continue coming together to build our capacity here in Uganda and in Africa, to build um, our resilience and our health systems so that any other outbreak does not result in a similar uh, difficult situation for any country uh, on, the Af on the continent of Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, let us continue to come together for the benefit of public health, for the benefit of our mother continent, uh, Africa. It's a pleasure to be part of this ceremony to declare this particular Ebola outbreak um, um, uh, over, and we look forward uh, to continue working with all of you to ensure that no other outbreak takes um, away from us as much as this one uh, has done because we have the tools, we have the uh, capacity, and we have the experience to be able to bring it under control uh, very, uh, very fast. It's a good start to 2023, and I'm looking forward to ensuring that the rest of the year is just as good, if not better. I thank you. So we do appreciate the totality, international community for the good words, but of course also for appreciating Uganda and accepting that Uganda is really doing a good job when it comes to public health emergencies. And uh, we are really looking forward to building more capacity and using our expertise and skills to ensure that uh, our other colleagues on the continent the capacity is well built. Now that the director for Africa CDC is here, we are looking forward to strengthening that. After we have, after the declarations, I think um, the next step is to receive success stories. And uh, the success stories um, will be represented by the RDC. RDC for Mubende. Before the RDC for Mubende comes, Honorable Minister, allow me to let you know that we have other RDCs here. One for Masaka, of course one for Mubende. I've also been informed that the RDC for Cassandra is here. I don't know where she's seated. But I know the RDC will be able to, to introduce other RDCs who are here. And she's going to give her remarks on behalf of all the chairpersons of the district task forces, literally who are the RDCs, and on behalf of the uh, district task forces uh, who are here. But in a special way, since we are in Mwende, Honorable Minister, um, I've not seen the DHT for this District, the DHO, 
the DHO and uh, his team, they have really done a good job. The DHO and the entire DHT, I don't know whether they are here. I saw Kauma. I suppose that the ADHOs are also here and the entire uh, district task forces. We appreciate you and your entire, your entire team. Madam RDC, kindly come. Since you are representing the president and the president doesn't take a lot of time, my assumption is that if you use a lot of time, it should be around 10 minutes to fit in the president's footsteps. Thank you, Madam Aradis. Our chief guest today the Minister of Health, Honorable Dr. Jane Ruth Achen, the State Minister of Health, Honorable Kawaya, Excellencies present here, the representatives of the UN and the diplomatic agencies, the High Commissioners present, the senior government officials, the resident district commissioners, the honorable members of parliament, the district chairpersons, the representative of the IGP is here with us, the health implementing partners, all political leaders, the district chairperson, the worship, your worship, the mayor, the religious leaders present here and cultural leaders, the, the members of the media, our beloved health workers and Ebola response teams, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon, everyone. The Abasaija Rosemary is my name, and I'm the RDC Movende and the chair of the district task force. But with me are the other DCs from the nine districts. And since I'm going to speak on, on, on their behalf, I'm requesting all the other DCs to come to step forward. Please, step forward, all other DCs. And as they come, Allow me to only welcome you to this ground on this historical event. Everybody, you're most, most, most welcome. And allow me to welcome our beloved sister, Dr. Honorable Acheng. She's a living hero. Honorable Yabi, you are, you are now an expert in handling epidemics. Yes. Other DCs, please. Can you introduce yourself? Name and district. Name and district. Name and district. Good afternoon, everyone. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Lukanga Amina is my name. Parasisi Kampala City. You're most welcome. Uh, Honorable Minister and our beloved important guests around, you are all most welcome. I'm Chibuka Francis Vazigatira Wamoti, Azigasena Mwe. I'm the RDC of Mubende working in Mitoma because I'm a born of this district and a resident here and I work in Mitoma, the RDC, but I said I have to join you and to congratulate the people of Mubende for going through that period. Congratulations, my fellow Muvendians. Thank you, my Madam Chairperson. I want to appreciate your effort and your team for the effort you put in to make sure that we are living, we are seen living 
Thank you very much. You are most welcome people from all over the world. Good afternoon, Honorable Minister and everyone. Lule Senkunge Mutien, RDC Masaka. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. I'm called Karungi Monika Kanyehe, the RDC of Chegegwa. Bless the Lord for this wonderful day and the great achievement. God bless you. I'm Seru Wajifaizo, Deputy RDC, Kasanda. Your daughter, she's not with us. She's on Siki leave. Masereka Kisembo Joshua, RDC Vunyangavu. Honorable Minister, good afternoon. My name is Alari Kamukama Nicholas Keine, Resident District Commissioner, Kagad District. You're very welcome, lady and gentlemen. Uh, Birunji Baka is my name. I'm the deputy at the Movement. Thank you so much. Honorable Minister, Honorable Minister, allow me to inform you that the district chairperson were part of the district task force. And with me here is the district chairman Mubendi and the chairperson from the neighboring district. Allow me, honorable, to call upon them. They should all come. Chairman, come, 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 come. And Mr. Chairman, we are going to introduce your fellow chairperson. And the executive, Yanguan. Ah, thank you very much. Madam Aladisi, the Honorable Minister. Uh, my name is Amuhele Zamai Kontambi, the District Chairperson Mubende. Uh, and um, I'm a chairperson. Uh, I think uh, the other chairpersons are here. Uh, I've been telling you that I'm a chairperson from the NLM party in this Uganda region. I'm among those chairpersons. Uh, I want to thank the people of Mubende and to thank the government of Uganda and uh, other partners for this work and the good work done here in Mubende. Suare, you've done your work. And Madam Minister, I thank you very much. As they have said, you are a living hero. You know, they were asking me about my, the, my leader in the last uh, year. I said, you're my leader. You're one of my...